Hello, this is Thomas, N1SPY, and as you know, a couple weeks ago I did a video about the different types of communication that airplanes use. Now I got a lot of comments and questions on that video saying that what I did was incomplete. And of course that is correct, there are a lot of other types of communications that airplanes use, and I'll be doing a series of videos zooming in on those different types of communications. And they're all very, very, very interesting. And um, today I'm going to be looking at non-directional beacons. So a non-directional beacon is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a beacon that beams out its signal in all directions. This signal has a pocket just below the medium wave frequency and technically the medium wave and the non-directional beacon frequencies overlap. So here's a very makeshift map of Florida and down by the keys we have a beacon by the name of Fishhook and it transmits at the frequency 332 kilohertz. There's a lot more you can do with these. Many people hunt them, and some people just listen to them. But I find the most interesting thing about them is their backstory. NDBs have been used since the 1930s, and in airplanes they're received using an automatic direction finder, or ADF. What an ADF is, is a dial, a 360 degree dial, and it points in the direction at which the beacon is. The airplane is equipped with two crossed antennas, and those antennas rotate to receive the NDB, and thus point in the direction uh, in which the beacon is. When the airplane receives the NDB signal, the ADF points in the direction in which the beacon is. Now, um, in, uh, in some instruments, the arrow points in the opposite direction, and the pilot has to make adjustments to the dials at the bottom, but I won't be going into detail on those. If there's no wind, you can just follow in the direction that the ADF points you in. But if there is wind, you sort of have to make a curve because the wind will push you off course. Now, in the wind, the wind may blow and it'll change the degrees at which the ADF points. It could be 92, then the wind blows, it could be 93, the wind stops blowing, it goes back to 92. But pilots have many instruments and many formulas that calculate the curve at which they need to go to reach the NDB. One last thing to mention, if you're flying in instrument conditions, which means you can't reliably tell where you are by looking through the window, you can, you can look at two NDBs and cross-reference your position and you can find out basically where you stand.
Now, if you can only receive a single ADB, things get a bit tougher. First, you have to turn 90 degrees away from that ADB, and then measure the time it takes for you to fly a certain distance. Now, by measuring the change in the ADF, you can use certain geomet geometric functions and certain trigonometric functions, and you can find roughly your position. Now, if you like history like me, it's very cool to look into the history of NDBs. Since there, were, uh, there weren't any real NDBs back then, some, some pilots may have been listening and using their AM radio to maybe listen to baseball games or do any other sort of thing. And they were provided with a little directory of the precise transmitting locations of certain AM stations. And they can use that to find to find their certain position in which they are just by using their AM radios. Any pilot who was trained in the last 20 or 30 years doesn't really know what ADF is because uh, NDBs are being phased out for more favorable VHF variants, which are much more accurate. Now, as you've seen, these NDBs have huge historical value and, of course, have been helping pilots navigate for, for almost a century now. And they're very useful and just an amazing thing to learn about. So I hope you go maybe listen into a couple NDBs or go and research them some more. And I know I've certainly enjoyed learning about them. So 73 from N1SPY.